Okay, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, I have another video for you guys talking about Kilua, probably one of the best characters in all of Hunter x Hunter. And I can't wait to see this video from Alexander talking about Kilua. I've loved his previous videos where he talked about Gon, Meruem, and Illumi. I can't wait to see what he has to say on Kilua. So let's go ahead. Also, yep, like he said, spoilers for the anime and the manga. So there's your warning. Also, again, if you don't know, if you're new to this video, if there's, if there are times throughout this video where I lower the volume, it's because I'm trying to avoid uh, copyright uh, claims because I ran into some issues in the past. So, that there's your reason.一緒にいると楽しいよ。うん。お前に友達を作る資格はない。必要もない。あんたはいつか。ゴンを見殺しにする。俺は。うん。ノイルン。ノイルンに家族全部。で、そんな中でも俺すっげえ期待されててさ。でもさ、俺嫌なんだよね。人に礼儀敷かれる人生ってやつ。うん。It's do I deserve more? What is purpose? What is a friend? I am just a lowly shadow. How can I ever deserve to be alongside someone who shines so brightly? Kilua Zoldic is almost inherently the most prominent heart and emotional crux of Hunter Hunter. Even just from a purely conceptual or archetypal level, he strikes such a deep chord and gets right down to some of the most fundamental issues of the human condition, just as a natural byproduct of following and being invested in his journey. The path to self-worth is far from a novel concept, but the specifics of Kilua's situation make Togashi's execution of them all the more tragic, all the more impactful, and all the more important. Changing oneself is never a quick or even palpable process, and Kilua's development is done such that comparing a snapshot of him at the beginning and end of the series will show two completely different people. But aside from one breakthrough moment, it is carried out so subtly from episode to episode and chapter to chapter that it's hard to pinpoint the exact moments where he changes. Yet in the story beats where this change is acknowledged, the impact is astounding. The human mind is a wonderful and terrible thing. As much as we would like to believe that we can go through life on our own terms, unaffected by anything, our environment is instrumental in shaping who we become, sometimes even in spite of our nature. And Togashi has acknowledged this nurture-centric idea very overtly through the design of so many of his major characters. Initially, it seems as though the template for Kilua is no different. Having gone his entire life being oppressively conditioned to think that he is limited and destined to a cold, heartless assassin's existence, having been consistently exposed to punishment reinforcement so much that genuine torture has become mundane to him, the situation speaks for itself. Given that he has grown to enjoy the art of murder to a certain extent, and given the monumental effect that experiences have had in shaping some of Hunter Hunter's other characters, mm. one would assume that Kilua would submit and accept. But instead, he yearns for more. A forced duty and burden is dismissed as he leaves the Zoldix for no reason other than to live. For just the faintest hope, the smallest possibility that there could be more out there than this slow death. And even aside from this being a journey that so many young people end up facing themselves, 
This fact in itself already makes Killua stand out against the grain and against Togashi's general pattern. Unlike someone like Kurapika, whose experiences often cause him to stifle his sense of self, Killua's essence shines through and overpowers the chains of obligation. But it's a feeble defiance. The shackles have not been taken off, they've only been given more slack. Kilawa does not know what he wants. He fears that he has no control of his life, that there is nothing out there for him, that he is fated to be unhappy and trapped. And then he meets Gon. Mm -hmm. Gon provides Kilawa with everything he lacked. Someone his age to play with, someone mm -hmm. who cares wholeheartedly for others, someone optimistic and determined, and arguably most importantly, someone with a purpose. Through spending time with Gon in the Hunter exam, Kilua slowly begins to learn where he wants to go in life, for the short term future at least. He wants to follow this ray of light to see where it takes him. Gon leads the way for Kilua. He shows him the wonders of life, adventure, human connection, joy, and more than anything else, friendship. Kilua cannot properly conceptualize and places so much value on the concept of a friend. For a person who has grown up bereft of meaningful connection, it is the greatest honor, something nearly untouchable. The irony is that Gon, as someone so trusting and innocent, thinks the exact opposite way. He develops attachments so incredibly quickly that I wouldn't be surprised if he considered Kilua a friend within a few minutes of meeting him. Gon is so open and honest with his feelings, so willing to embrace Kilua, and it's a welcome shock to the system. His sense of morality and his good nature allowed him to befriend Kilua, not fear him. To simply accept him, assassin and all. That clears a huge hurdle and a mental barrier that Kilua might have had, and this allows him to open up to Kurapika and Leorio as well. Traveling and learning with Gon changes everything, and although these changes are understandably not drastic enough for Kilua to suddenly have a goal in life, it does give him reason to live, and an alternative much better than what he had before. It's enough at this point for him to simply conflate his purpose with Gon's, and find a vicarious goal through the quest to find Jing. <laughs> キラも<笑> いえにずっと By the time we reach Greed Island, the situation is crystal clear. Gon gives Kilo a purpose in a world where he sees none and provides him with the value of connection. 
It is no exaggeration to say that Gon literally saves Killua from a slow, meaningless death of a life. Because of this, Kilua feels like he owes him in ways that he may never be able to compensate for. But that isn't the only reason. Early on, it's laid out for the audience that Kilua hates being perceived as weak, and makes sure to show that he is an extremely skilled fighter and killer. Though he likes Gon almost immediately, it frustrates him that others believe Gon to be so impressive when Kilua's skill easily exceeds his in comparison. As discussed in a very good Reddit thread by Malleus Deus that I'll link in the description, this is a bona fide reaction formation, a psychological defense mechanism indirectly showing that he's not competent in himself. He is not secure. He feels a need to project and prove that he is better than others because he hates the idea of being perceived as inferior. This lack of confidence clearly indicates low self-worth. If he believed in himself, he wouldn't get frustrated by this. And while this seems like a minor detail, it is instrumental to who Kilua is. Why does he get so upset at Netero for seemingly underestimating him? Because he wants some proof of his worth for validation. Why does he not see that he's Gon's friend when he clearly is? Because he doesn't believe himself to be valuable enough. This is partly a sad effect of the conditioning that went on throughout his life as a result of both his family's tyrannical expectations and the brainwashing Illumi conducts on Kilua through inserting a needle into his brain. This needle forcefully adhered Kilua to a doctrine of pragmatism. No matter what the situation, if faced with an enemy that Kilua were to deem as stronger than himself, Kilua is programmed to flee, which could obviously cause major problems for Gon down the line. Not only is it potentially harmful, but it also just stifles his ability to believe in himself. This psychological conditioning, the disproportionately high regard he holds Gon in, and the insecurities he feels combine to form the internal struggles that Kilua goes through throughout the bulk of the narrative. After realizing how important Gon is, he turns inward and looks at himself with relation to his best friend, dismissing his own worth in comparison. He spent his entire life looking for a way to forge his own path, and now he has it. What can he possibly do to pay that favor back? In what sense is he worthy to stay alongside Gon if he could leave him to die at any second? What can he possibly do? How can he possibly make himself worthy of his friendship? If he cannot help him from the struggles he has, what use is he? Because Gon changed his life so substantially for the better, Kilua feels that he only has worth if he is useful. And as someone who has lived a life completely devoid of genuine connection, he cannot conceptualize proper friendship at the beginning, so he believes his only worth to Gon is as a tool. He wants to help Gon in any way, to sacrifice himself because he is not valuable otherwise. Mangling his hands at the dodgeball game because Gon put faith in him, trusting his decisions and helping him train no matter what, and his extreme protection of his friend once he lost his Nen, through any means possible he wants to help him, because in his eyes these uses are all that he's good for. Of course you can stay by his side. With all that you do for him, all the messes that you clean up, he should be honored to have you by his side. Kilua does not realize how much Gon cares for him independent from his utility. Making friends is so natural to Gon that he thinks it should be assumed knowledge. While Kilua is constantly emotionally fixated on how to pay Gon back, Gon looks forward and does not recognize the sheer weight on Kilua's shoulders. It's a terribly sad miscommunication by two young boys with a gigantic blind spot. The truth is, Kilua puts far more into the relationship than Gon does in this section of the story, and Gon does not even realize it. 
An ironic note is that his overprotectiveness as a result of his care for Gon draws a parallel with how his brother is so possessive of him. Obviously, the nuances are entirely different, but this also sheds a light on Illumi. Why does he dote upon his brother in such a pathological and radical way? Is it something he inherited from his mother? Is he jealous of the idea that Kilua is the only choice for heir? Or does he just genuinely value Kilua's contribution to the family so well, much we, that he feels like confining him to this set life is the only video, way so to give his life meaning? We may is have an idea. a deceptive act of kindness in his own strange way. Aside from Silva's wishes, there is undoubtedly more to this control of Kilua in terms of how it applies to Ilumi. But regardless of the twisted reasoning behind this conditioning, Kilua finds himself grappling with its control deep within. Because he's been conditioned to run away, he considers himself a failure and a disgrace. He doesn't realize that the specific conditioning on him leaves him with such little possibility of overwriting his programming. But this is artificial programming and an artificial mentality. Gon broke him out of his shell and showed him the way, but he wasn't independent. The needle stopped him from truly leaving his comfort zone to find something real. His dependency, his feelings of inferiority, and his hero worship of Gon were his safe place, but by his perception, they restricted him from wholeheartedly supporting his friend when he needed it most. And then, Kilua pulls the needle out. There is no lack of psychological development here just because the thing holding him back was physical, and there are mm -hmm. no skips in Kilua's growth because he still had to go through every single mental process that was needed, even if it had been a solely psychological block. The needle is a physical manifestation and representation of his last psychological ties to his family, his unfair filial obligation. With this action, he sheds physiological ties to the Zoldix and becomes an individual. And from here, not only can he unreservedly support Gon, but he can actually begin to find new values, make different connections, and believe in himself a bit more. Carl Jung believed that the path to fulfillment for man was a confrontation of the shadow, all of the darkness in people that hmm. threatens to take over. He said that being able to control this shadow was the path to enlightenment. But in a literal complete opposition to the idea of confronting the shadow, Silva believed that partly due to this needle, Kilua would come back to him and lead the business. That he would go out, journey with Gon, confront and defeat the light within himself, and emerge as an unmitigated, cold, perfect assassin. Perhaps one of the primary reasons that Kilua was expected to be the next head of the family was because he has light within him, and a potential for kindness. The idea being that once he confronted that light, he would be more dark and whole than ever, and in addition with his other attributes, more fit than any of his siblings to lead. More fit than Ilumi or Miluki, who were never capable of benevolence, or Kaluto, who seems to be judged by the family to not have the aptitude for it. But Kilua doesn't care, and he defies all of this expectation. Kilua, what do you do? Hmm? That's what I'm saying. I think that I'm going to get the hair of So in this sense, Kilua is nature over nurture, and that's one of the primary reasons as to why he's so special. No matter how many rough experiences he is put through, his nature shines through. Kilua is a compassionate, good person who never strays from who he is despite being psychologically manipulated, tortured, and forced into being a pragmatic assassin. In a characteristic subversion, he does not become Gon's rival or enemy through these feelings of inferiority as one might expect, but he mm -hmm. chooses to work through it to be the best he can be. His insecurity seems to lessen in impact as the story goes on because he slowly gains confidence and stature. He is less concerned with his reputation in comparison to others, and he becomes much more modest. 
But keeping in tone with the gradual nature of his character arc, not everything is solved. This is a realistic process, and he is still critical of his own abilities. As the Chimera Antarch reaches the late game, a reversal becomes apparent. As Kilua finally begins to find the light, Gon sinks into darkness, mm -hmm. and Kilua can do nothing for him. Mm. Oh, this. Mm. Yeah, this. I was not a fan of this. Not not the writing. I, I didn't like that Gon said that. Hmm. It's yeah. This is one of the worst things that could have been said to Kilua at this point. For someone who was just doing what he had always been doing by cleaning up Gon's mess, someone who wanted more than anything to be considered a friend and a partner, it's a dagger blow, and it proves to him that he still isn't as useful as he wishes to be. No one can save Gon from himself here, and that in itself means to Kilua that he is just not good enough. The scar reopens, and he is reminded of why he constantly felt the need to sacrifice himself. And while he ultimately ends up being unable to save Gon in the Chimera Ant arc, his narrow perspective stops him from seeing the truth of the matter. That he has always been extremely important to Gon. He knows that Gon is way in the wrong here, but it's not until after he saves his life and reconciles with Aluka and Nanika that he realizes what he never saw. The love of his sister allows him to recontextualize his situation and see what he really wants in life. To always love and take care of her, to experience the little joys of life, synonymous with Jing's sentiments at the end of the story. Gon showed him the path forward and allowed him to see the beauty of life, but Aluka allowed him to push on and take that final step. He finally sees his growth as an individual, his identity and purpose, and his merit as a person. This is why his words to Ikalgo and Palm are so important. The idea that friends don't have to say thank you to friends because that's what they are there for. It's a line with dual meaning in both cases, displaying that he is slowly finding himself. He says this to Ikalgo to subtly signify that he is beginning to see his own value, but the line being repeated to Palm even after he beats himself up over Gon's suffering confirms that he knows that he is worth something. While it is so important to fully appreciate the connections in our lives, there is no need to hero worship a person and put them above yourself, regardless of what they've done for you. Mm -hmm. That is no way to live, don't, even don't for someone in as unique a situation as Kilua. Because as wonderful as Gon is, Kilua is just as much so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said earlier that Kilua feels that Gon saved him in ways he feels unable to compensate for, but this in itself demonstrates that he is beginning to understand that friendship is not some sort of debt that needs to be repaid. But the thing is, he has always known that he was worth something. He strived for more than an assassin's dead life because he knew he deserved more. 
He felt insecure when deemed inferior to others because he knew that he could do great things. Buried underneath his self-loathing and sacrifice, Kilua knew that he deserved happiness. He just didn't know how to conceptualize it, realize it, and pursue it until he felt like he could stand on equal footing with Gon and be a worthwhile person independent from him. It's not that he thinks any less of the young boy who saved his life, it's that he thinks more of himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He doesn't play this off or ignore it and become embarrassed. He acknowledges that he helped Gon and that he deserves this thanks. It's very subtle stuff, like constantly joking that Gon owes him, but it speaks volumes of his confidence. Only at the end of the anime do we see that they are true equals in both of their minds. And that is what true friends are. As I've said in my previous videos, Gon's journey was one of anti-development, which is a lyrical contrast and parallel to Kilua's ridiculous growth. At the beginning of the series, Gon had a very clear purpose, and Kilua was aimless. But now, Gon has found Jing and doesn't really have a goal anymore, and Kilua is seeing clearer than ever before. Kilua had to learn to fight rather than flee, while Gon still has to learn when it is time to back down. It's a reflective journey, one emphasized by the main philosophy of the series. The relationship these two shared was never the biggest area of focus for Gon, and while it started out as one, it did not end up as Kilua's end goal either. However, I think that if they don't realize it already, these two will come to understand that this was the most important development in both of their lives. But they will continue from here, on their individual paths. Both living, both learning, and both lucky to have known and grown from one another. Kilua goes from a lost, meaningless existence to a life where he had formed so many attachments that had shaped him for the better and where he had found the perfect purpose to pursue. From someone utterly confused at the concept of simply helping out a friend to one who goes to the ends of the earth and back to show his loyalty, one who dedicates the foreseeable future to providing another with happiness. In crafting this character, Togashi demonstrates an innate knowledge of what people yearn for and empathize with, a consummate understanding of the allures of love and life. Kilua shows the overwhelming importance of self-worth, the indescribable value of human connection, and most of all, that even those who are utterly lost and devoid of anything are capable of finding something in this world. That regardless of the path that seems set ahead of you, your own purpose and meaning in life transcends all. Many thanks for watching. Okay, so there it is. And first of all, I do want to apologize for not talking much throughout the video. I didn't want to just, uh, you know, interrupt him while he was talking. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if there's honestly anything else I could add. I feel like he's already said everything. To me, Kilwa is, again, just uh, such a, such a well-written character. And you can see why so many people absolutely love this, uh, love this kid. And... To me, one of the things that I, I absolutely love about Kilua is he feels like that, you know, sort of rival character that you see in most shown anime, but without acting like the traditional or the uh, stereotypical rival character. Like he's actual friends with the main protagonist, whereas as opposed to most rival characters you see in uh, shonen they usually end up hating the uh, the main character for one reason because they um, you know they make them feel insecure about their own accomplishments but and and that does happen here but it doesn't cause him to uh, you know hate gone 
but it, it stems from his own insecurity and he does deal with it whereas opposed to most uh, you know typical shonen rivals they usually and usually it, it's it also sometimes stems from their own insecurity but they always end up blaming it on the main character whereas opposed to Kilwa, he he doesn't do it. He doesn't let it get in, in in his get in the way of his friendship with Gon. And I think that's one of the things that so many people like about it. And one of the reasons why so many people love Hunter Hunter is because it takes a lot of the tropes of Shonen and it kind of flips them on its head. And I just that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love it. And I'm sure a lot of people share my opinion on that. Anyway, excuse me. Anyway, guys, that's all I have uh, for the video. Uh, let me know your thoughts, of course, as always, in the comment section down below. Remember to leave a like, share the video, subscribe if you haven't, not just to my channel, but subscribe to Alexander if you haven't. And remember to click on the bell icon because that will notify you whenever I post a new video and whenever I go live. And if you are subscribed, do me a favor and just check to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube does unsubscribe people without their notice. Okay, I know this for a fact. So if you are subscribed to my channel, just do me a favor just quickly check to make sure you're still subscribed and not just with me but with other youtubers that you follow because again youtube's system i don't know what the hell's wrong with it but it's it's messy so that's going to be it remember to stay safe and take care of yourselves as always bye for now